Oh my gosh. I finally, finally got around to doing an old money room makeover and it's done. And I'm officially sharing the whole video here today. Of all the room makeovers I've done, this is definitely, in my opinion, the best one and also the most difficult because it's so different from the way I normally design my rooms. I normally go for a very maximalist interior design, very dark furniture. This is just totally, totally opposite from that and I love it. So today I'm officially doing an old money room makeover. <laughs> I'm so excited. So when I say the term old money, I am talking about the aesthetic, which is exactly what you think it is. It's people that have inherited their wealth. But when I'm talking about room design, I'm talking about that classic and traditional interior design. I'm not talking about going out and buying super expensive old money furniture. You know what I mean? We are budget friendly on this page and we're going to do it as affordable as we can while making it look awesome. So if you are a fan of the old money aesthetic and you've kind of wanted to transform your room to look like this elegant space, then stick around because we we're doing it today. So my bedroom is very small. It's 10 feet by 10 inches. So it's almost 11 feet by 11 feet. It's a pretty tiny room. Now, believe it or not, I was actually able to put nails in my wall. I know. I did it just for the picture frames. I did not do it for my paneling because I don't know. I just felt like that was way too many holes to risk. This video is relatively renter friendly though, because that is what I aim for. Just because I move so often, I normally do not put things up with nails. I normally use alien tape. I'll link the alien tape below. I've used it in every single makeover of mine and it's really my go-to when it comes to hanging things on the walls if I can't use nails. Coming up with an old money design for a bedroom was really, really difficult for me. This is not something I've done before. It's not an interior design that comes easy to me because it's not something I see often. To get ideas for how I wanted my room to look, I went on Pinterest and I looked up traditional interior designs. I looked up classic interior designs and I looked up elegant rooms, living rooms. I really found the design that I wanted in the living room photos. Once you have the design of your room that you're going for, it's time to choose your color palette. Now I can't paint the walls in my house. So I decided to keep them all white because this was the best way for me to do paneling as well and have my furniture be a mixture of beige, creams, very light, warm grays, and some gold accents and some very light pinks in the room. So once I came up with the idea for my bedroom, I made a digital rendering of it on my Procreate app. And this is the rendering right here. Doing this rendering literally saved me because I liked the way it looked in the photo, which meant all I had to do was find items that looked similar to bring that to life. For my bedroom, I knew that I wanted two nightstands on either side of my bed, along with two matching lamps and some artwork. Pretty simple setup, if you ask me. The hardest part for me was figuring out the paneling, which you can find in my other video that I made dedicated just to doing that accent wall, just because so much went into that part of the makeover by itself. But once I had the paneling up, everything else came together really easily. And that accent wall alone kind of made the entire room. And if you're looking to do a really cool accent wall that doesn't cost you too much, I would highly recommend checking out that video. I will uh, put the link right here. Now for the fun slash hard part, which is thrifting. It took me about two weeks to thrift everything and I was going every single day. <laughs> I've been thrifting for I think three days straight now and I was lucky enough to find two matching bedside table bedside dressers and two matching lamps as well. These dressers I got for $20 a piece. My lamps that I got I got them for $8 a piece which is just so wonderful. Now I wasn't against having two different dressers but I just happened to find a matching set and I was like, okay, this is so much easier because if I have one dresser, I have to make sure I find another one that's the same height, similar width, you know, and that could be really difficult. The other dresser, which is on the other side of the bed, it's missing a handle. I'll get around to adding that eventually. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. I don't even care that it's missing a handle. It's fine. It still does its job. There's two handles. 
I can still open it, whatever, we're just gonna ignore that. But as you can tell, the color of this is just not on par when it comes to old money. So my plan is to paint it and because the room is white and I'm trying to keep this very like light, airy, ethereal feeling in this space because it, to me that just kind of feels more elegant. I'm going to paint this a very soft gray tone with some white on top of it. So that's what we're gonna do. And that's my plan for today is to paint these dressers. I really liked this scalloped edge and this the bunching of the material around the lampshade. This is actually a very similar type of lampshade that I noticed when looking at the royal family's home interior. Although it's much bigger than I was hoping for, you can't pass up the opportunity to get free lampshades with a lamp, you know? I really like how thin and simple the lamp is itself. I do wish that this gold wasn't so shiny. Hopefully when it's all said and done though, I'll really enjoy how it looks. I think I will, but... I thrifted it and I think it's great considering both of the lamps were $8 a piece. So I spent $16 in total for two lamps and I think I really lucked out. I think it will serve its purpose well. So as you can see behind me, I currently have my furniture already set up in the bedroom. And the reason I do this is because I need to make sure that everything's going to fit properly. It also gives me a really good idea of the things that I need to add into the space to make it feel more complete. My idea for this room was to do some wainscoting and I still would really like to do that. I'm going to go to Lowe's today to see if I can find what I need to do it. So we're gonna see. We're gonna head to the store right now and see what we can find. The reason it's important to have your design in mind before going to the store is because there are hundreds of panel designs to choose from and it can be quite overwhelming. The first thing you'll want to do is find the white panels, find a design that you like, then you can look for the size you are wanting because normally they carry different sizes in each design. And I looked at panels such as these that laid flush to the wall on each side. It's also extremely important to lay down your panels on the ground to make sure that the wood is not warped in any way. I purchased an inch and a half chair molding and as you can tell it goes flush to the wall on each side. And I chose it on purpose. I just liked that it laid flush on each side instead of having a harsh edge. But that's also an option and it is a little cheaper. Now for a panel of eight feet, it is $9.58. But you can go as large as 12 feet, and I think it's a little bit cheaper, but good luck fitting that in your car. So in total, I purchased six panels for three picture frame boxes. And because I'm not going to be cutting at a 45 degree angle, even using a miter box, I purchased these corners. This is seriously the easiest hack. So I got these from the same hardware store for $2. They were on sale. They were $3.12 a piece. I had to purchase 12 of them for each corner of my picture frames. And instead of having to cut it at a 45 degree angle, I no longer have to. All I will have to do is connect the paneling straight to this piece. And this solves literally the most stressful part of wainscoting. <laughs> Before I can paint my dresser, I have to prep the surface so that way the paint sticks. All you will need to do this is a sanding block, which costs around $5. You can find these on Amazon, your local hardware store. They can be used wet or dry and be rinsed and reused, so it's a really great item to have in your home. Once I finished sanding, I cleaned off all of that excess dirt and grime from the furniture just using an old pillowcase and some water. And the reason I pointed out I'm using an old pillowcase is because if you have any giveaway clothes that are stained that you really can't donate, you can always use them for painting or cleaning purposes. It's just a really good way to get multiple uses out of old items. The reason I'm not using cleaning product is because I didn't want the cleaning product to leave any leftover residue on the furniture prior to painting because that might mess with the way the paint dries on the surface. Now it's time to begin painting and already sanding the top just made the furniture look so much better because it had like this 
gloss varnish on it and I don't know what it is about glossy furniture but I'm just not a fan. I also made sure to remove my hardware from the furniture so that way I didn't get it covered in paint. I knew that I wanted the furniture in my room to be a lighter color. I wanted to go for kind of a beige color. I went to Lowe's and I looked at all of their different swatches and I found this kind of light gray beige tone that I really liked. And before I had that paint made, I went and checked the sale section and I found an entire gallon of that color paint. It was very similar for only $9. So don't forget to check the sale section of the paints before you go and grab one and get it made. Painting this furniture, I was not aiming for perfection. I was not aiming for a coat that did not have any details to it because when I think of old money furniture, I think of items that have been passed down. I think of items that are pre-loved, which means that they will not be perfect. They will have some character to them. I used a very thick bristle brush that left these beautiful brush strokes and it kind of looked as if it was a wood grain finish. so far I might not even do a second coat we'll see once it dries maybe I'll want to add more but so far I think this looks amazing it's perfect <laughs> Once I finished painting my furniture, I moved it out of the room and I set up my bed frame. The bed frame I got from Amazon for $65 and I like this bed frame because there's no headboard attached and because I travel so much, having a headboard and a bed frame, it's just a lot to travel with. And this breaks down very easily, so that's why you will see it in all of my makeover videos. Because it's not fitting to the old money room, I covered it with my bed sheet that goes with my duvet cover, which I will be using towards the end of the video. I think this is such a good hack if you have a bed frame that just isn't very appealing because a bed sheet looks just like a bed skirt and you don't really need to go out and buy a separate bed skirt if you have a sheet. Definitely make sure to steam it or iron it so that way it looks perfect. Okay, so we have a problem. I have a This looks so stupid. Okay, so I have a blow up mattress. I sleep on a blow up mattress and I was like, this is gonna fit. It doesn't fit. It's so small. I thought this was a queen size blow mattress. It's it's not. It is very much very tiny. So I think I'm gonna have to get I'm gonna have to get a real mattress. I'm crying right now. This is so funny. After I finished setting up my bed, I put all my furniture back in the room to see what it would look like. I did not get a handle for my dresser prior to finishing this makeover, but I still think it looked really good overall. Just imagine there's a handle on my dresser. Good morning. I'm going to buy a bed today because 
<laughs> this bed is just too small. As you saw from last night, it just doesn't work. So I'm gonna get a queen size bed. Haven't had a bed, an actual bed in eight months. So this is pretty exciting. And yeah, so I'm gonna go to Ikea, test out some mattresses. <laughs> Okay, I'm back from Ikea. I'm just filming now, but I wanna show you what I ended up getting. I thrifted this pretty crystal vase for $3. It is super heavy, by the way. Wow, it's just gorgeous. When I saw it, I just thought it looked so expensive. So this is going to go on top of my Greek pedestal. My pedestal is officially back in my life. I sold this, not this exact one, but my other one before I moved to Texas. Here I am with another one. I just love these so much. I think they're so cool. I actually managed to get it for $23. It was cheaper than what it was last time. And I purchased this from Hobby Lobby. They also have them online and they have them in different styles, but I just feel like this is the most classic style. <laughs> Because I wanted to bring some life into the room and I had the floral prints I was going to be putting on my wall, I also wanted to add some flowers. You can definitely do real flowers, but I own fake flowers. That's just what I used. It's just easier than going out and buying something else. I did end up adding some pink flowers that I got from the 99 cent store along with some real dried leaves that I had. And I totally forgot to film that, but this is how it looked. Lastly, I did get a mattress, but it's so heavy. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to pull it up the stairs. <laughs> My boyfriend ended up hurting his back, so he's not going to be able to help me, but I do have a mattress. So improvements have been made. <laughs> Woo! Oh gosh. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we just did that. Okay. Okay. Woo! Gosh, this is gonna... <laughs> this is exactly why I've not had a mattress. Good afternoon. Today is the fifth day, fifth day of thrifting. So I'm gonna go to Deseret and see if I can find anything. Fingers crossed, I hope that I can. got back from the thrift store. I went to four different places and wasn't able to find what I needed. So I've decided I'm just gonna focus on the things that I currently have in the bedroom. I'm going to focus on putting the wainscoting on the wall because that's going to be the most difficult process. And then once that's filled in, I'm going to set up everything else. I can show you what I got yesterday because I showed you some of the items, but I forgot to show you the rest. So the first thing that I got for $1 is this really pretty velvet jewelry box. It looks like something that would be in a Victorian home. It's like squishy and padded. It looks like a family heirloom that would have been passed down and I had to get it, especially for a dollar. The next items I got were picture frames. I got these two right here in a smaller size and I actually really enjoy the print. I feel like it works perfectly with my color scheme in my room so I am going to be keeping this. I got these two. These are actually two different frames but they look very similar and they happen to be the exact same size and I plan on putting different prints inside of them. I am going to be spray painting the frames gold so they all match. To prep my frames for spray painting, I cleaned them, I popped out the backs, and I took out the glass. Two of the frames that had the pictures in it already, I could not pop out the back without ripping off 
paper that was stapled in place. So instead I ripped up a plastic bag and I taped off the glass using painter's tape and the bag, like what you see here. For the spray paint, I purchased this metallic gold from my local arts and crafts store and it cost me around $5. Make sure that you are doing this outside if you do not have a proper mask to wear because the fumes are very toxic. I like to spray mine in a box and then close the box after it's sprayed and leave it for a little bit and come back to let the fumes clear out. Once I finished spray painting and they dried, I ripped off the taped off areas from the front of the frames. And then I cleaned the glass. Based off of the photos that I found on Pinterest of traditional and classic interior design, a lot of the artwork on the walls had floral prints inside of it, just like sketches of flowers, paintings of flowers, and I wanted to go for the same thing. When I went to the store, I was specifically looking at gardening books, plant books, nature books, photography books, stuff like that. I really wanted art in the frames that was identical, but because I'm thrifting. It's kind of hard to do that, but I did find one print that had a sketch of a plant, which I thought was beautiful, and I just pulled out another one that I just thought looked pretty elegant, in my opinion. And in order to make it look even nicer, I DIY'd a backboard by just using white printing paper. It was super easy to do this. All I did was I cut the pieces into strips and taped them from behind and laid the print inside of it. Once it was all taped in, this is how it turned out. I think it looks pretty good, but now it is time to move on to the wall paneling. My room is 10 feet by 10 inches. That being said, I'm working with a relatively small space and therefore I am only doing one accent wall. Because I am doing this accent wall for an old money room makeover, sticking to that classical interior design, symmetry is very important. It's commonly seen, but it's mostly important at a main focal point in your room. And that is going to be my accent wall. Now for my cutting, I used a hacksaw. I wouldn't recommend using this. You can definitely get a handsaw. I think it would have been a lot easier if I did it this way. I got this, I think it was around 200 or $300, maybe it was less. So this is what I'm going to be using to cut my panel. So miter box actually allows you to cut at a 45 degree angle if you wanted to go that route. A miter box is strictly for paneling, which is kind of great. I realized watching this back, I wasn't really explaining myself correctly. So I just wanted to say that a miter box allows you to cut at all different angles. And if there is one tool that you should buy, if you don't have a tool to cut with, it should be this one. It costs around $11 to $20 and it comes with a hand saw. So here are all of the dimensions that I will be cutting and how many pieces. So I've got four pieces of 23.5 inches, six pieces of 48 inches, and two pieces of 41.5 inches. When cutting anything, especially material like this, it's super important to wear a face mask because those particles are cancerous. So always wear a face mask and always wear eye protection. I also didn't have gloves to wear, so please don't come at me. I know I should have had them on. All I did was set up my pop-up table and hang the panel off the side, mark it, and cut it. I totally forgot to lay something underneath my panels before doing this, so by the time I started cutting the second one, I put a really thick sleeping bag on the ground so that way when they fell, they were protected and weren't getting dinged up.
Once I was finally done cutting, I had 12 pieces in total along with 12 of these corners and it is time to officially add all of those pieces to the wall. But before I could even officially add them, I had to add the tape that I was using. I'm using painter's tape. For a DIY project, I think this worked extremely well. They do not fall, but if you do have a place where you're able to use, you know, glue or maybe something like alien tape or a nail gun, I would personally do that. It's just because I'm not able to damage my walls at my rental that I went this route. And it's also extremely easy. So far, the most stressful part of this process has just been the cutting and making sure that each piece is perfectly even. Now looking back on it, it actually wasn't as bad as I thought because this is almost like a particle board and it's easily sanded down. Now it's just more for the time consuming things, which is adding the tape. For my tape, I am rolling them up very, very thin like this. And I'm doing this because I want it to be extremely tight. I don't want the tape to move from side to side like this. And if you do a really thick piece, that's what's going to happen. So that's why I'm making them so small. Because I'm posting this video about a week and a half since I applied these panels, I can honestly tell you that all of my panels, except the two center panels on the top and bottom, stayed to the wall perfectly and they happen to be slightly bowed, which is why they kept lifting. But because I didn't have to put holes in my walls to do this project, I still think it was worth it. finished all of these it took about 30 minutes a lot of work has gone into leading up to this point right here I started with the bottom piece first so the easiest way for me to do this to make sure everything was level I started from the left side I wanted to make sure that I was able to see the paneling right underneath my lampshade and I used my phone as a level super simple if you didn't know that you had a level on your phone now you know and it worked great let me just say, using tape is such a good idea because I was able to move it around in case I didn't place it correctly. And if I ever do this in the future using a nail gun, I'm going to tape it first and then nail gun it to the wall. It just saved me so many times. I think it looks good. I like, I can't really tell. It looks straight. One of the main reasons I started with the bottom panel first, and I highly recommend you doing this too, was because the wall to my ceiling was not perfectly straight, and if I would have started from the ceiling down, all of my rectangles would have been uneven. You have the option to get multiple of these and put them in the center evenly. I see that in lots of photos. It looks beautiful, it looks very elegant. But I'm just going to do it in the center because I plan on putting a bed frame here and I just thought I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm not gonna put a picture frame there. I think adding this would just be really cool and unique. So that's what I'm going to do. There are many different designs that you can get in these as well on Amazon. I'll link this specific one below. And I think they're so cool because they have many different uses and you can also paint them. 
I also applied this the same way, just using tape, but in order to make the tape stick to that embellishment, I had to put alien tape first. <laughs> okay, we're done. Before my bed, I was going to keep this $10 duvet from Ikea on here, but I decided I'm going to stick with kind of cream tones. I don't know why. When I saw this bed sheet with the headboard, it just did not, it just wasn't, wasn't the vibe. So I'm going to put my bed sheets on first and then put my headboard on because I feel like in order for me to see how the room's going to look, I really need to see what the sheets will look like and the bedspread because that has such a big effect on how the room looks. Okay, this is my beautiful head headboard. <laughs> $40 on Facebook Marketplace, such a steal. It's exactly what I was looking for. I wanted something that was tufted and I wanted something that had a little bit of a rounded top, not like super rounded because I didn't want it to take up too much space on the wall. And I was also looking for something that was beige and <laughs> this is just perfect. The cool thing about this is it's just a headboard and legs. I don't have to, you know, get a whole new bed frame. I decided to keep the other side of my wall plain instead of doing anything on it just because the main focal point of my room was behind my bed. I also like to project movies on my walls, so I like to keep one wall in my room plain so that way I can watch TV. You also have the option to change the hardware in your room too. My room had black hardware, which is very rustic farmhouse vibes, but because this isn't my property, I'm not gonna change out the hardware. But if I owned the property, I definitely would do that because it's such a small thing that you can do that makes a really big difference. Now for the last and final steps, which is just to add in all of that decor and organize everything. And I forgot to mention this cute little guy I got from the thrift store for $1.50 and I love him. I also made sure to include some classic novels that resembled my color palette. And I tried to organize everything on my nightstands in a symmetrical way, as symmetrical as I could make it because I did not have identical items. And because of that, it made arranging the decor very difficult for me because it's just not the way I'm used to arranging my items in a space, symmetrically, that is. I tried to do my best. I tried. Believe it or not, this is my first time ever using nails in a makeover because normally I don't. I asked the landlord if I could do nails. He said yes but I might have to paint this room. There's only one curtain here. Okay, so slight hiccup, pretty big hiccup actually. Um, I only got one curtain, just one. Here's the deal, I have to finish this room today, so I am not waiting for another curtain. I have all white curtains and I'm just gonna use those because you know what? Maybe it's a sign I'm not supposed to spend money on curtains just because I'm doing a makeover. Use what you already have and call it a day because I cannot believe this. I can't believe this. <laughs> For my curtain rod, I know I did not put it in the right place. It's supposed to go all the way to the ceiling, but because I was already putting holes in the walls to hang up my picture frames, I was like, I don't wanna add any unnecessary holes to my walls if I don't have to. I also spray painted my curtain rod with the same gold spray paint because I realized the black did not look good. I also made sure to steam my curtains once the curtains were up. 
So in total with the wall paneling and all of the other decor items that I purchased minus the ones that I already owned, it cost me $235. Now, if you were to go out and buy the curtains brand new, the curtain rod brand new, the bed frame, it would definitely be around $350 if you added in those extra things that I already owned. Therefore, having an elegant room does not have to be super expensive. Now it's time for the final reveal. In total, this makeover ended up taking me two weeks to do. The paneling wall took me about five days. <laughs> the decor and thrifting it, yeah, it took me some time, but here is the final reveal. Okay, so the room is officially done and <laughs> I love it so much. Oh my gosh. It honestly doesn't even feel like the same room anymore with the wainscoting and the picture frames and stuff. I don't know. I just never have had a room so elegant before and so like classy and I don't know. It's just so different from what I normally do in my makeovers. It's kind of throwing me off. I feel like I'm almost in someone else's bedroom. But nonetheless, I totally love it. I love how it turned out. I couldn't be happier. I can't wait to go to bed in this room tonight and read and have tea before bed. I don't know, there's just, I feel like I can be a different person in this room, if that makes sense. I don't know what I'm trying to say. All I can say is that I love it. I love it. But um, that being said, thanks for hanging out with me today while I put together this room. I hope you guys liked it. I hope it gave you some ideas, maybe inspires you to decorate your space in an aesthetic that you enjoy. And if you do want to attempt like an old money aesthetic room, hopefully this can give you some ideas to do it yourself. I would love to hear your thoughts on this makeover though, if you liked it, if you like what I came up with for this design, and I'm going to uh, go eat dinner now, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! Actually, I feel like I should do a different outro because like,